Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with Sea of Ninja Hacks. And in this series of videos, we've been going through how to set up a simple membership site. And in this video, we're going to start working in the page editor. But I just wanted to back up for a minute and go back to some of the old sites that we had already built or some of the old funnel pages, steps that we've already built. And I just want to make sure that as you're going through and you're building this out, you go through and you set up all the things that need to be set up like you would do in any other funnel that you would build. And there's a lot of other free training inside of Sea of Ninja Hacks on how to do that. But make sure you come into your settings for the funnel as a whole, set up your domain, set up your favicon, make sure you have your SMTP, header tracking code, body tracking code, all that stuff. Make sure you get all that set up and then we'll go back into the steps themselves. And in the steps, you want to make sure you go into publishing, set up anything in here that you need to do like we went through and we made sure that our paths were correct. And of course, if you have to do anything down here at the bottom. But another big thing I kind of just kind of glossed over was the whole automation. Make sure like in a case here where we are having somebody opt in that we set up the automation so that they are added to a list. And that you can have an email go out, you can do an SMM text at that point. And also as we get further along in here, well actually let me just go back inside the free membership area, because normally I think you only use this if you're running Actionetics. Or, and I'm not sure, and I actually got to check on this sometime, if you can actually run, if you're, let's say you're running MailChimp, can you run emails out of the automation tab? I'm not sure if you can or not, but let's say you are using a third party autoresponder like MailChimp. We'll go into the edit area and make sure that when you're in there, you set up your integrations inside of the page editor. By coming in here, clicking on settings, going to integrations, and over here you can set up your integration. So let's say we're going to do MailChimp and we'll add to a list. And then you select the list you want to send them to and you send them a confirmation email. And also in here, make sure you set up your SEO metadata. You put in your title, your description, keywords, author, and then put in an image so that an image will show up when somebody drops this link into Facebook or Twitter or something like that. And of course, background, typography, we didn't really go over that. Make sure you set that up so you have already pre-selected what your fonts to be and the font color and that kind of stuff. So I just kind of wanted to backfill on that and just remind everybody that you do have a lot more steps than the very simple ones I'm going through. I'm assuming you've already gone through the rest of the training, know how to build out a funnel, know how to work in the page editor, and I'm just showing you the parts that are really necessary to put together a membership area. So now inside of the membership area, again, you have the same thing. You got your automation, your publishing, and this setting, of course, is for the entire funnel. So now let's go into the editor. And inside the editor, we can go up to settings. And again, you have your integrations, you have your SEO metadata. But the interesting thing here is when you click on SEO metadata, all you can put in is a title tag. The way ClickFunnels has this set up, you can't put in any other of the SEO metadata. But what I did is, um, or what I do, is I actually create a, another page that I drive the traffic to. So you can create just a regular page, you can put all your SEO metadata on there, and then when somebody lands on that page, they're automatically directed into the membership site. And so that way on social media, you can put in your link to your membership area, and it'll have all of the metadata in there. And then once they click on it, it will redirect them into the membership site and it really works great. I especially use that for doing deep linking into the uh, lessons inside of the membership site. So here we are inside the membership site. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. The first thing I want to do is let's on um, this one here. I don't think we worked with any background images really before. So let's put in a background image and I just want to use a texture for a background. So I'm going to type in BG dash because again, a lot of my backgrounds I have named with BG dash something. And so we're going to find one and let's just grab this one right here and we'll double click on it and we'll put that in as a background. It's not really my favorite one, but we'll use it anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to repeat. So it'll make it uh, It'll make it as small as we can. Let me just take a look at that again. Didn't look like it had changed, but let me see here. 100% width. Oh, yeah, definitely did. So we will put that on to repeat. And so now we have uh, kind of a grayish pattern in the background. 
And let's say on this one here, um, we're going to put a little header at the top. And so we're going to leave this alone. But what I want to do is I want to change the background. And let's change the background to black. Let's just do that. And then let's take this. Let's take this row out. Let's just delete this. And I want to put in a two-column row. Because on the left-hand side, we're going to put in a logo. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to put in a navigation element. So we'll just go to image. We'll put that in. Let's go see what I have, if anything, for logos. All right, we'll, we'll just put in my CF Ninja hacks. And let's say we're going to say on the width here, let's make this 200 so it's not very big. Okay, well, let's even make that 150. Make it kind of small. Let's get rid of a lot of the padding. Still too much. Let's take it off of the row itself. Let's make it 10 each. Okay. Now what we need is we're going to put in a navigation element. And so we'll just scroll down to find the nav element. Let's grab it right there. And the first thing I can see is it's way too far up to the top. So we will... Bring it down a little bit. Why is everything all highlighted? There we go. And let's see here. Let's change that font size. It's a little small. And let's change the font color to white. And now we have three different elements here. And you can change the number of elements by coming to here. We can put in as many as five. But in this case here, let's just stick with two of them. All right, let's make it three. Font weight is bold, align center, that's fine. And so what we want to do here is, so you can put in whatever you want as, as your words here. So let's just say this one here is going to be resources, and then you would put in a link to the resources. Or if somebody were to click on it, you could scroll them to the section where it is or anything you want here. Now we'll just leave in pricing, that one's fine. And then another one here you normally have is like a log out. It's uh, very convenient. Occasionally, uh, something will get messed up inside of the site, and people are going to want to find a way to be able to log out. And so you want to have that option in there so that they can log out. And what you want on there, you need a log out link. And what it is is it's slash members slash sign underline out. Type that in there, and then that will turn it into a button they can click and log out of the site. And this logo now is too small, so let's go back in here and make this a little bit bigger. So let's make this 200. And now it's probably a little bit too big, but we'll just quit goofing off with that. So now, next thing we want to do is we want to add another section. So we will grab a full width section and just drag it in here to the middle. And then we're going to grab a third section, and we're going to make that a footer section. And what we want to do then is let's just increase the padding and the margin at the top. Come in, add a new row, one column row, and a new element, and that will be subheadline element. And we're just going to say this is going to be our footer. And let's make the color of the footer white or the text color white and we will make the row itself we'll make this background black in keeping with what we have at the top now in between here I put in a section but that section doesn't seem to want to work right so let's delete that back out and let's save this as we're going along so we don't lose our work so now let's come back in add a section again full width section we'll drop it in right here and hopefully this time it'll work. Good. It worked this time. So we're going to add in a one column row. Just in here so we can put in a headline element of some sort. You probably, I mean, you don't always have content above the um, area where you have the content. But you, you may. And so we'll just put that in there. And then let's create another row. I'm sorry, another section. We'll go with full width on this again. We'll put in a section, and then we're going to put in a two-column row. And in the two-column row is where we are going to put all of our content. 
So now on the left hand side, what we want to do is now we're going to start playing with the special features that only come with the membership site. So we're going to put in our navigation is very normal to put in your navigation on the left and then you put in your content on the right. And we put in that content and a lot of times I generally don't use them even though I probably should is um, put in a search element as well and we'll put that search element below the navigation menu. And believe it or not, that's about all you have to do to build out one of these sites. So now let's just say with the members area, just to set it out a little bit, let's uh, come in here and let's say we want to, let's just do a drop shadow around the entirety of the content. Let's see how that looks. Maybe put a little padding at the top. Let's just go... Just go 30 and 30, that should be fine. And let's round those corners a little bit. Now let's click on save. And that's really it. This is really all you need to do. A lot of times pull this over, make the nav a little skinnier and make the uh, content area a little bit wider because generally speaking you're gonna have a video in here so you want to get those videos as big as possible you could put in a video pop-up or a video modal and that way when somebody clicks on it it actually pops open the video full screen but let's just kind of leave it like this for now we'll click on save and then we'll click on preview and see what we got we only had really one lesson that we were working on um, so here we have our nav menu you have all of your sections and you have the lessons below it you click on them and it opens up all of the sections now there are ways to have all the sections open up automatically and there's a whole lot of stuff realistically that you can do with these membership sites and i'm going to show you some examples here but these are only just examples and they're only a few examples of the different types of membership sites i have built out there was one i built about a year ago now where what we did is it was a program where you got like weekly recipes weekly workout plans that kind of stuff and we actually set it up so that every week you got the content for that week and all the rest of the stuff went away. All the rest of the content went away. I mean, there was some certain content that was always there, but as far as the weekly meal plans and everything, it would show up this week, and then it would be gone the next, and you get a completely new set of recipes and meals and workouts and all that kind of stuff. And that works really, really cool. It took, uh, took me a few days to write all the code for that, but um, it was a lot of fun to do it. And so here's, here's that one um, lesson that we were working on. And the question I had is whether or not we could get this to show up as two columns, and it showed up very nicely as two columns. So I'm very happy to see how that worked out. And that's easier than the trick that I was even doing. But the way I do it, it's, it's actually better visually, but that's okay. Now, in case here, we're looking at this, we're saying, okay, well, we probably need some sort of a white background around here. So we can do that one of two ways. You can go into your lesson and you can tell the lesson to have a white background, or we can make the entire area here within this row white. So let's just do that first. Let's go in and make this white. I think I'm going to like it better as the lesson though. So let me just change this to white and we will save it. And then we will reload our preview page. Yeah, see now you kind of lose everything over here on the nav side. So I think we're going to change that back. What we're going to do is we'll change this back and make the background transparent by pulling the uh, scrubber bar over to the side and then we will click on save and what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this page and then we're going to leave one version of it and go back into our lesson and we were in lesson number one here so let's open it in the editor and there's no way to set the background for everything. So what we need to do is just come into the section. So there's no background for the lesson or the page. So we come into each individual section and we say that we want that background to be white. And then we'll go down to the next section. And we can come up here to the top and manage our sections up here as well. We'll just click on that, click on section number two. 
make that white and then we will go to section number three and make that white as well. So now we'll bounce out of here. We will click on save. And now if we go back into our preview, we can reload that page. And this part here should have the gray texture come through. And then here we go. We have our content with our white background. And of course you can pretty up your content and you know give it maybe um, you know some borders and some different background colors and and whatever in here but you really kind of get the idea about how simple it is to build out one of these sites we got our footer way down here at the bottom and they come out and they they end up looking pretty good now there are a lot of different things you can do to to really enhance these now a lot of them take simple css code and some of them take much more um, to do it, HTML and JavaScript and things like that. But let me just show you, first off, what I did for Steve Larson last year when I worked with him on his affiliate outreach program. We, um, this is the site I built out for him there. And it's pretty basic. We had a lesson over here, and all it was uh, for this first lesson was just a big image on the page. But you see here, you got uh, this color here is black, but all the rest of them are orange. Now, the orange was put in by using some CSS. So we go in, we select the CSS, and then we tell it to change the color. Now, if you want to know how to do the changing of the color and some of the other stuff in here, all of those videos that I shot for Steve will be included below this here, and I'm going to call them the Affiliate Outrage videos or something like that. They'll definitely be notated, and I do believe it was number one in the series where we went through that. Now, since building this out for Steve, I've made a lot of changes to it. Um, well, one of the things I think I did for him is I did the different text colors. I did the different hovers. So as you hover through here, and there will be a share file for that as well. And then as you click on the ones, the ones that are highlighted, and you can see some of them are indented, some of them are not. So those are all things that I do believe were in the original. And then uh, what I added in here since, just kind of messing around with some stuff, is I have images in here. So you can put an image in here, and I'm just showing that on hover. You can change the image. And if you click on this image, I do believe it brings you off to like an affiliate product. Now here I was playing around with being able to put in accordion style into the into the lesson. So this here is actually just an image. And as you click on the image, then these lessons below it will open up. And so I do that on both of these here. And so again, that's something that could be done uh, with some programming to build it into your site. And what else did I put in here? I got this here. You can click on this and it opens up this little module below it. So with a little text and a video and such not. And that can all be built right in here, again, using a little bit of CSS and JavaScript and, and things like that. So there's a whole bunch of fun little things that I put in here. But now let's go back into where we were working because what I wanted to show you was pretty much the only thing that you have much control over in here. So we have settings. Um, you can change your font that's going to be in here, even though that font should be overridden by whatever you have in your lesson. Um, themes and advanced, you could do some animation, but I don't know why you would. So really the only element that you can change, and there's not a lot of changes you can do, is this element right here. You can obviously do the margin, the fonts, the font family, the font size, and then of course the color of everything. So we can have, so you see you turned the, uh, uh, the section, section name, it changes that color. That's what that text is for. You can change the background color of it and uh, mobile menu toggle color. When you go to mobile, there's going to be this little thing that just says, I think it says lessons on. It's got a little hamburger bun and it says lessons. And so that would be controlled by this. Generally speaking, you probably will never change it, but you certainly could change the colors of it. And then we also have, we can put in some sort of uh, dark with highlights so we can put in different shadows. 
But again, like I said, there's not a whole lot that you can do with this, and that's why you have to do the um, you have to do the CSS to make any significant changes in that nav menu. Now, let me show you a really simple one, and here's here's just something simple we use for one of our finance ones. We're actually still in the process of building this one out, and this is about all it's going to look like. We're going to have a video, we're going to have this nav menu, and that's it. These are just people who want to learn about financing for political campaigns, and so all the content is just going to go in here, and we're just going to leave this one really super basic. With my CF Ninja hacks, I, of course, had to put a little bit of extra stuff in here. And so what I did is I built out, among other things, I built out a really fancy way of doing all of the content. And so we built in all these special headers, and I built in ways to be able to close them all simultaneously. So it was actually quite a bit of code that had to go in here. See, I, I have them all open like this. And then if I just click one, it closes them all. And so this took a lot of coding to put this in here. It's nothing that you really would ever have to do. But I did it just um, mostly, again, to prove to myself that I could. And so this one here has, has a lot of stuff in it. But then here's one that I actually built out for a client. We didn't end up using it because of a whole lot of reasons. The biggest one was I used the wrong image when I originally set it up. But what we did here, and it was an idea I actually got from the affiliate boot camp, is what we did here is I used an image as the as the menu, as the nav menu. So as you see, there is no nav menu on this page anywhere. And what I did is I swapped out the image for the nav menu. So if we come in here and we click on introduction, it opens the introduction content. And then you have your different lessons that you can switch out. And you can see it is changing here. I didn't do a lot of work on building this out, just kind of did a proof of concept on it. But if we go back to menu, it says welcome and has some content. We go to introduction, it changes the content. We go to chapter one and then chapter two and chapter three. And again, the content at the bottom is pretty much the same for all of them because I didn't waste a lot of time on content. But then I also had in here the ability to go from one chapter to the next. So it'll go from chapter, I'm from, where were we here? It goes from welcome to introduction and then to chapter one, chapter two, chapter three by clicking on these buttons here as well. So that turned out really cool and hopefully someday I'll be able to build out something similar to this for somebody else. So now let's go back in and let's see there's one other thing and there's one other trick I'm going to teach you guys here. And I see people in the ClickFunnels group all the time complaining about how these sites work on mobile and if they just knew a simple trick, applied it, they'd have no problem. And let me show you what that trick is. What we're going to do is we're going to say this box here, we want this to be for desktop only. So we're just going to come down, click on desktop only for the content. Now on one of these membership sites, you can only have one instance of the nav menu anywhere on the site, but you can have more than one instance of the content area. So what we're going to do, and in fact, we'll just use this area up here. We're just going to add an element up here. And we're going to make that our content element. Doesn't matter how big it is. We're just going to come in then. We're going to click on settings and we're going to say mobile only. So now what's going to happen is when we go to mobile, we're going to have the content here and then we're going to have the lessons below it. And here's that, here's that hamburger bun with the lessons that I told you about earlier. So we can come in here and we can change this. And let's just say we want the background color to be blue just to set it off so we can see it. So now that background color is blue. And that's where it says lessons. And we have our content above. Because with me, I like to have the people to be able to come in. They come in, they see the content, and then after the content, they can scroll down and pick a new lesson to view. And again, with a little bit of code, you can set it up so that they will automatically go back up to the top of the content area every time they click on one of the buttons. And then we'll go back to desktop. And again, in our desktop view, we have it looking like we did before because it hid what was mobile only. 
So if I'm not mistaken, I think we have covered just about everything we needed to cover as far as setting up a simple membership site. There is going to be one more video, as I said, and that's going to be about something that's very important, and that is restricting access. So until then, I will see you in the next video, and have a great day.